At the very beginning of this book, you describe how your trek to a Senate hearing felt like a death march. And I want you to talk a little bit about the series of events that began in 2003 after articles in the Washington Post began to appear that questioned the amount of money the tribes were paying you, raised questions about your involvement in a casino cruise line business venture known as Sand Cruise that fell apart under questionable circumstances. That was the beginning of a whole chain of events that you describe, which are almost sort of archetypal Washington crisis and unfolding of a scandal um, where you're under this microscope and, uh, you know, you were fired from your lobbying firm, you were investigated by federal prosecutors, you were called to testify in Capitol Hill, you were pilloried by the news media. Uh, what was all that like for you? It was horrible. It, uh, at first when it started, as I, as I mentioned, um, I thought this would probably blow over after a couple of weeks. I, I didn't think there was anything to it. The article in the Washington Post, which came out at the uh, at beginning of March, I guess, in 2004, um, or end of February, um, the article said I charged my clients a lot of money. There were articles in the front page of the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal that said the same thing. Yes, I did charge my clients a lot of money. This reporter who came to see me for the Washington Post, um, I gave her an interview. Um, tried to explain to her what we did for our clients. There wasn't much interest in hearing that. Uh, so the information that I compiled didn't get in the article. But when the article first came out, frankly, uh, there was an email back and forth with the firm saying, should we post the article on our website? Uh, all it really does is talk about how, uh, you know, it's claiming we're ripping off our clients, but our clients know better than that. And uh, what do we, you know, well, it'll be over with soon. But then Senator McCain uh, got into action and uh, subpoenaed all my uh, emails and, started uh, a serious investigation uh, from the Senate side. Uh, unfortunately, it seems this investigation involved some of my rival lobbyists. He actually wrote a letter uh, to the chief of one of the tribes lauding the work of one of my rival lobbyists uh, in the investigation. So uh, it seemed to me that uh, at first uh, that it would go away, and then when it was clear it wasn't going to go away, uh, I thought, well, gosh, why am I getting picked on here? What's the... Uh, What's this all about? I'm just doing what everybody does, right? Oh, well, why, why is this a problem? Shortly thereafter, obviously, it, uh, quickly, I was fired by my law firm, and uh, people started to, um, you know, treat me with a little bit of disdain or a lot of disdain. And there were more articles. It seemed like every day brought an article on the front page of the Post. It was extremely difficult, as you can imagine, for my family. And uh, seeing the paper get there every day, and there I am on the front page of it. And um, eventually, uh, I started to look into, I hired an attorney, I had a brilliant attorney named Abby Lowell, uh, who uh, started going through with me my emails and all of what I had written. Now, I wrote 850,000 emails over the less than a decade that I was a lobbyist. So I kind of had diarrhea of the fingers, and um, uh, there were plenty of emails there. And Senator McCain's committee was sort of parsing through them to find those that were boneheaded and salacious and things like that and knocking them out to the Washington Post on the front page. We complained. Uh, we filed a, a complaint to the Senate Ethics Committee because that violates Senate ethics. If you're having an investigation, you're not supposed to leak it all to the press, but they didn't quite pay attention to that one. And uh, so eventually it became clear to me that I had crossed lines and uh, lines that I didn't set out to cross, lines that I didn't think I crossed. Uh, when I was doing it. Frankly, I stopped caring about the lines, to be honest with you, while I was lobbying. I just wanted to win. And I didn't understand what this was all about. Um, and then eventually I started figuring out what it was all about, and I saw that I had done things that were wrong. And when I did, it, start, it shocked me, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't contemplate that I would ever have a moment like that. And then um, while I'm sort of going through this personal uh, journey of figuring out what I did and where I was, there was a public uh, inquisition going on, and everything in my life was taken negatively. Every aspect of my life, even the charity we did, uh, was, was uh, described in pejorative terms. And um, so I eventually saw different papers who, like the LA Times, where I'd grown up and uh, out there in Beverly Hills, they uh, had to have their uh, cut at me, and so they went back and took my eighth grade uh, uh, election when I ran for president of the class in the eighth grade 
and they recharacterized that as if this was the beginning of my nefarious campaign activities. And they had another article where when I played football, I hit a linebacker once uh, pretty hard and knocked him out. And they portrayed that as uh, proof that I was some, some kind of villain. As if you're supposed to play football, I guess you're not supposed to hit people, according to them or something, I don't know. But anyway, this was going on, and um, uh, I was sinking. Uh, and I just kept falling and falling and wondering, oh, when, do this, when does it stop? But it never stopped, and it kept going and going. It stopped when I landed with a thud in prison. Uh, I was brought up to that hearing um, you asked about, and I described the first uh, part of the book. And um, I pled the fifth at the hearing. Let's go Senate hearings. People ask me, why'd you plead the fifth? Senate hearings aren't sort of fair fora for judicial uh, uh, rights. The witnesses don't have rights in the Senate. In fact, they have rules in the Senate they don't even abide by them. And I'll give you an example. When we got there, the first thing out of my attorney's mouth, Abby Lowell, sat down and he said, you know, senators, I'd like to ask a question, a point of uh, information. And they recognized him. And he said, you have a rule that you made that if a Senate hearing is likely to lead to the indictment, criminal indictment of a witness, or the besmirching of their reputation, this hearing has got to be in held and closed session. That's your rule. Now, if there's a hearing that is more likely to lead to an indictment of somebody or to destroying their reputation than this one, I can't imagine what it is. But meanwhile, you have this hearing in the biggest room on Capitol Hill. You designed it to take place when they were opening the Native American Museum. So you could fill the room with people who had been whipped up against me. And uh, you have more cameras here than the Super Bowl. And this hearing should be closed. And the senators kind of looked at each other, looked at him, kind of chuckled, and kept going. So I knew that there wasn't going to be a fair forum. Uh, but what kind of got to me while they were asking me questions was the memories coming back to me of who these guys were. You know, a lot of them were people who either I or people who worked for me gave a lot of money to. Byron Dorgan got $75,000 from people who worked for me or my clients. Uh, Senator Campbell, who chaired the committee, uh, claims he doesn't remember it now, but I read in the book the exact date of it. We had a breakfast at La Colleen Restaurant, which doesn't exist anymore, uh, where I handed him a bunch of checks. Uh, he was chairman of the Indian Affairs Committee, and he told me that our clients would do very well in front of his committee. And so I'm thinking these things as I'm watching these senators ask me these horrific questions, uh, insulting, nasty questions, and I'm pleading the fifth over every one of them. And it got so bad that Senator McCain, who was my greatest antagonist, actually was the one who stepped forward and said, Senators, I think we better stop this. We're actually harassing this witness. <laughs> no kidding. And uh, so they, they stopped and I, I got to leave. But it was a horrific experience, as unfortunately this whole thing has been. One of the things that seems to really stick in your mind was the way in which you were pilloried for wearing a hat. Your, yeah. The image of you wearing a hat as you exited, I believe, that hearing. No, it was, it was when I pled, uh, oh, pled guilty in court. Thank right. you. Yeah. Um, tell us about that. Well, it was January 2006, and um, I knew from the beginning I was going to plea um, because as soon as I saw I was guilty of things, um, I didn't want to fight and create a big spectacle and drag things out. I wanted to get through it, and I wanted to do what I thought would be right. Um, and um, so I knew I was going to plea, and I was already uh, cooperating and meeting with the Justice Department, as I did do for many, many days, including after I went to prison. And um, the uh, uh, day came in January uh, 4th, I think it was, uh, maybe 6th of 2006, when I had to go to court. Now, everywhere I went, the media would show up with their cameras, and they'd charge me and yell things at me and make it as unpleasant as life can be. And I really didn't want that. So I decided to go to court as early in the morning as possible to beat the media. It was, a, I think, a hearing at noon or 11 or something. And I went at 6 in the morning. And um, it was raining, and it was dark, and I left that house that January morning. So it's raining, uh, so I grabbed the raincoat and I grabbed a rain hat. Uh, people said it was some Borsalino or some fancy hat. It was a rain hat, a collapsible rain hat that I had in my closet. And I grabbed it and I put it on. And I walked in the rain uh, and went into court. And then most people had rain, raincoats on who were going in. There weren't a lot of people going in at 6 in the morning, but folks who were, including my attorney, uh, had raincoats on. And, uh, well, the hearing took place, uh, pled guilty, 
Uh, I had a lot of things on my mind that day, not my wardrobe. And I walked out. I put my hat in.